part 31 is installing dummy content. At your WordPress dashboard, um, the first place I recommend you um, look is under tools and import. At the very bottom, your last option should be WordPress. We're going to install the WordPress importer. For some of you, you may not ever need to use the WordPress importer, uh, but in most cases, when you download a theme and it has dummy content for you to import, the documentation will refer you to the WordPress importer for actually importing those templates. So you definitely should check in your theme documentation to see um, specifically for your theme, how you're supposed to upload, import, or download um, the dummy content for your theme. In our case, we're using a theme that does give us some options. Um, as you know, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and import a uh, template from this theme. Uh, but I like to actually build out my own pages using Visual Composer. But let's say there is a particular theme or, or I'm sorry, template or page that you want to use that is already designed by the developer and you just want to modify the assets such as the images, the content um, of that template. You can definitely import the template as an individual page. It doesn't necessarily have to be your home page or you can import the template as your home page and build on other pages using Visual Composer. You can also build onto the template that you import using Visual Composer given that Visual Composer is the uh, tool that was used to build the page. So that's why I always recommend when you download a theme uh, to download one that's compatible with Visual Composer because you know most themes that you find that are generally structured in a specific way can be built with Visual Composer um, outside of you know actually using the same tools the developer used to create the theme. So you know this theme that we have, this template we have uses Visual Composer. So I'm going to import one of the templates from this theme and I will build onto that template with Visual Composer in the future. As for my particular theme, you know, we have theme options. Sometimes you'll have an import option in the theme options for your theme. We have theme options at the top administrator menu. Sometimes you'll have theme options over here on the left side. But for this particular theme, we have to use the import feature in appearance. Okay, so for us, we've got appearance and installer panel. So obviously, every theme is different. As for importing files, everything is going to be different for you, but the um, tools and import and the WordPress importer is likely to be the place that you import uh, theme files, you know, template files. So as for, for me, I'm just going to use our importer, the installer panel that came with our theme to show you the process of, you know, what it takes for me to actually import. A particular template from this theme so of course I'll browse through kind of look at the different uh, templates and once I find one I'm just gonna click it depending on which hosting package you have how fast your package is it may take longer for you to import or shorter for you to import that template just be patient if you see you know in the tab of your browser that it's loading don't click away don't navigate away from the window don't refresh it just let it do its thing in some cases when you go to import a theme or template and you, you use an automatic import tool um, you may not have the uh, necessary space on your server to or or you may not have the necessarily privileges to upload a big template so it may upload um, it may import only you know 80 percent of the template and it'll leave some files kind of messed up it'll you know when you go and check out the imported page it won't look right 
or it'll say um, it failed to import or it imported success successfully but you're still missing some elements of that template just go back and import a second time and everything that's already been imported for the template will um, it won't be overwritten the import uh, feature will just skip those existing files because they already exist on your server for instance if one of the images in the template is titled image-1 uh, header and you go to import a second time to try to import the rest of the files that are missing well um, image-1 header since it already exists in your media uh, library then the import function will say hey this file already exists we couldn't import it because it's already there you know we, we're, we can't overwrite the image well it's just gonna skip that image and that's gonna be zero kilobytes zero um, allocation of space taken to upload that file and it'll skip back down all the way to the last few images that needed to be uploaded that weren't imported uh, the first time you use the import feature so you know if you run into a small error like that where some of the files on your site just don't show up but most of them do um, just go back and re-import and you know maybe the second or third time you'll have all the files that are supposed to be imported especially with big themes usually this isn't an issue and sometimes you'll have warnings plugins easy installer class most warnings can be ignored they're not actually really um, errors they're just warnings you know just letting you know that hey something just doesn't look right or something looks weird uh, but in some cases everything should be good like I said if you have an issue with you know uploading your entire theme just go back and re-import it and it should refresh much faster to let you know hey this is already imported everything is good so let's go back and check on um, in our pages. To find the imported page. So, so far everything seems to have imported properly all the images all the icons all the content the text um, etc yeah everything looks great uh, so you can go in here and actually make changes to all of this you can get rid of everything you can uh, replace images you can replace content uh, but you'll have to now browse through you know your pages different posts different portfolios your widgets and make changes and of course your theme options so when you make any import your theme options are ju adjusted based on the template that you're importing so if you try to import a second template and you use an automatic import feature it may overwrite files and it may overwrite your theme settings you'll have to use the WordPress importer to import any additional pages once you've imported one so that that page and the assets associated with that page do not get overwritten so now we have basically a template that we can now go and use um, as a reference to you know build out our website we can say hey we like this header we want to change the images maybe we want the slider to have a different effect uh, maybe I want a different transition for the slider different text uh, for this part maybe I want to get rid of these images right here and use a different image instead you know maybe for this I want to use a different background or a solid color background you can go and make changes to all of this and really adjust it how you want this just makes it easier for you to um, you know really get started with editing so that you don't have to build an entire page from scratch you can say hey I want to scrap this whole section so with visual composer if I click on edit we'll know this is in an individual row and because it's it's like a, a scroll um, chances are this is also going to be one column 
so and in this one column we'll have several different places where we can upload logos this is a row and chances are this is going to be three columns We've got a row here maybe two rows and this is three columns with an image a header a text and a link and then one column with a header one column one column so maybe this is two rows or uh, one row with three columns a header and this is likely to be one row with one column with revolution slider as an as a module so under edit page when the page loads you should go to the back end editor again we're using visual composer our theme is compatible with visual composer our theme was actually developed using visual composer so by default all of the assets on this page were set up to be used um, set up to be manipulated with visual composer so this is a revolution slider and in Visual Composer, you should be able to choose. Hey, I want to use uh, slider one that I had saved in the visual in the Revolution slider settings. So I can drop a row in here and add one. You know, have a one column row and add just Visual. I'm sorry, Revolution slider as a module. Okay, so one row, one column. Here we've got one row, and basically, uh, yeah, basically one row with a row within this row and one column. We have a row here with three columns, one, two, three. A row here with three columns, one, two, three. So these six columns, or these three columns in these two rows are info boxes. We know exactly where to find that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is where we'd customize the info boxes. We've got a row here with a single image. Row, single image. A row here with the header. And I believe this is our row with the header. And it's got a custom background so you can click on this pencil icon to uh, make changes to the background of this section so let's see background options and ultimate background so this is using visual composers ultimate background it's a parallax um, auto moving background so if you want to change your background um, what you can do is click on this plus. If I, I don't want to remove this background just yet. I want to see what size this image is first. So I'm going to click on this plus symbol to edit this background image. And it brings up our image that's currently being used. This is the image at uh, 1920 by 1280 pixels. So now we know that this image in the background is 1920 by 1280 pixels. We can go and change this. So I might even change this in real time just to show you um, exactly what it what it looks like. So 1920 by 1280. So for now, let's say I'll, I'll just go and find an image. Images, and I'm not, you know, recommending that you go and search for um, random images on Google, but I'm just showing you in real time how easy it is actually to um, go in here and manipulate these uh, these themes, these templates. So 
So since this is a scrolling image, I want to find something that is... Let's do a concrete wall. Or So I want to do something that's uh, kind of unique, but you know, doesn't take away from the website visually. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm super picky I should probably go a little faster since I'm doing a tutorial but you know I'm just showing you basically uh, what you could you know different ways that you can uh, take advantage of having these templates readily available to you So this one's closer. I like this one better than any of the others. Let's see. One more search. So I want to have one that is pointing down from maybe from the top. So, uh, we'll do... Maybe pattern is the word I'm looking for. That's a pretty cool image. So instead of me actually designing one, um, I'm just going to find something kind of normal. That's pretty cool. I could probably do something nice with that. Yeah, maybe I was looking for something more like this that was uh, maybe empty, but a real image is what I was looking for. But I think that one would do. You know, that's a pretty cool picture. I could probably do something with it. So I'm going to go and grab that image. Okay, the, here are more of them right here. See, that's really cool. I like that. But I want something that's not too overwhelming. Just to give the site some taste. So there we go, parking lot patterns. Let's see if I can change the size. Looks like that's the closest we're gonna get to it, but I really like this image, so I'm gonna save it as well.
So the last thing I want to adjust is to make sure this is pretty much uh, seamless. I think that'll do. I'm gonna trim this. Um, and I wanna throw a little bit of a texture on there. making some visual changes. I'm gonna save this in uh, in my assets folder in backgrounds as a JPEG. And uh, just for SEO purposes, I wanna name this Third Coast Mobile Detailing. So it has our business name in here and some keywords that we're using. Humble, Texas. Uh, and this one, scroll. Save this as a JPEG in our assets folder. So obviously you can hire someone to do your pictures for you. You can go to um, stock photography websites and I'm gonna do a video on that as well if you need to find images that you can use. But you know, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, close out most of these windows. And I'm going to edit this page and upload that image. So upload files, select files, just to show you how easy it is to manipulate uh, templates. When the image is uploaded or images are uploaded to your website, if you save those images with the title, uh, like I just displayed using certain keywords in your website title, uh, what you can do right now, it's, it's smushing. It's using a WP Smush, our plugin that we uploaded in the last video uh, to actually compress this image to make it easier for us to um, have a faster website so that our pages will load. That's why we saved it in JPEG instead of a PNG. This image is not something we're gonna uh, go back and edit in the future. So, you know, I'm okay with it being a JPEG and not saving it as a layered PS, uh, PNG or a Photoshop document. So I'm gonna click Save Changes. And I'm going to update my page. As soon as this uh, reloads, I can go back and reload our home page, which is, you know, right now, all of the assets on this page are still the same, minus that one image that we just changed. All right, so that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. So it's seamless, uh, we saved it in a seamless way if you you know you can download extensions in visual composer to be able to go back in uh, the background like so that you can also do cool things with the background um, and in most cases you know with visual composer you'll be able to have features that you see on other websites by purchasing visual composer extensions to add functionality to your page building um, plugins. 
okay so that just gives you a quick idea of what it's like to manipulate assets of course I can go in here and choose to completely throw out specific sections um, but you just want to make sure that you know what you're editing and before you you know when you make a change you want to go and preview the change before you publish it to make sure that that change um, is what you intended on making and if that change is does accurately represent what you want it um, within that template go ahead and publish it before you make another change just in case you know you accidentally delete something and you know you you can't recover it so you don't want to go and make a hundred changes and then on change 101 you accidentally de delete something you can't undelete and you don't know what the settings were for that particular element you deleted just to have to figure out how to recreate it right or to start over so frequently preview your, preview your changes um, when you import your template and actually go to make changes to it and publish it frequently you don't have to publish it publicly you can always go over to draft click OK and then you can update and it'll save it as a draft so that people can't see it um, the visibility ne doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your pages being published publicly so even if your page is published which means people can find it if they look for it uh, you can go back and set the page to password protected or private to where only you can see the page while it's being edited most of which you know I'll cover more about Visual Composer as well in another uh, video but now we're ready to actually start making changes to our website and this particular page will you know this this imported page that you just imported as a template will give you a jump start on learning how to use Visual Composer learning how to use WordPress and learning how to manipulate files make changes and update settings on particular pages on specific elements roles or columns um, it'll kind of get you in the door so that you can you know maybe even view the page side by side to see how Visual Composer is set up so you know again you've got these three columns here three columns here two individual roles so we know that that is these three columns these three columns on two individual rows you know so if you're looking for something specific three columns let's see how many rows those are we'll scroll down a bit in visual composer to find our three columns again and boom three columns on one big row so this is a row of content okay and three columns in this row boom 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 let's scroll down a bit more three columns three columns And this I assume is one big column and it is one big column so this just gives us a scroll effect for some icons and I'm sure we can link these icons to different websites if we want to this looks like one row with two columns yes one row with one column here and one big column here one row with two columns one row with two columns the same here except it's inverted and let's see what we have I think this is gonna be okay cool so we've got one big row and technically it has one big column but inside of this row we have another row which has four columns so you'll see right here got a row embedded within a row and this row that's embedded has four columns for four different portfolio items so boom boom four columns with four different portfolio items and one row with two columns an image and text on the left side one row with two columns so an image and then text on the left side
and here we have one row with two columns this column is huge um, and the second column is very small so uh, five out of six you know spaces on the left side and one out of six spaces on the right side which gives you a very small um, column on the right side so boom that's what this is this is the one sixth I'm sorry this is five six and this is one six so this is a big row with two individual columns one column one column so you can space everything as you wish and I'm pretty sure this is all going to be in our uh, widgets section which you don't see that in visual composer you go over to appearance widgets to see anything in basically you've got a footer here and another footer here that has four different widget sections in it so we're gonna go over to widgets we've got a left sidebar we've got all kinds of sidebars but this particular page does not have a sidebar so we can uh, collapse this box let's go down to the footers so footer column one all the columns are separated column two column three column four in column one we have about company column one about us the title about company blah 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 let's see let's make sure we're finding the right content for this column one two three four about categories recent posts contact us about categories recent news gallery so this one is a little bit different let's see hmm. left and right sidebar okay so um let me go over to pages so of course uh you know don't follow my theme uh section for section because your theme settings are going to be way different your options are going to be way different uh but it gives you an idea of how you go about editing um, and making changes so in our case we've got a footer page where um, there are visual composer items in the actual page for this footer that's embedded on our website I'm gonna wait for the page to load and we've got one big row with four columns one two three four it might look a little funky here because there's not a lot of space for all of the settings to be previewed okay so you can use visual composer items with this footer to build out the actual visual elements of the footer that's what's beautiful about visual composer whereas some themes uh, some themes only allow you to insert you know certain widgets into the footer we can actually put whatever we want in here and style it however we wish so long as we know how to use visual composer so you know that's a cool feature about the theme that I'm using is that I can actually edit this with visual composer and I have zero limits to what I can do to, to this I can remove this all together put one big image down here which I actually might do and you know I can style this using an individual page which is titled footer okay so refer to your theme documentation for editing editing the theme I'm pretty sure they'll have some tutorials and walkthroughs in the documentation for that particular theme on branding changing theme options such as colors typography headers footers page content you know and even menus but you know uh, this is just a good introduction into visual composer and really using wordpress to make customizations with the um you know let's say you want to keep a copy of the page you just imported in order to go back and look at certain settings for different sections or just to have a backup 
Well, in the previous video, we talked about installing plugins and what plugins I recommend. Duplicate Post is one of those plugins. So what will be really good for you when you import this page is to um, clone this page so that you can have a duplicate in case you need to go back and see, you know, um, how a particular section was set up because you accidentally deleted it, what the settings were for a particular section and so on. Now we've got a draft and we've got a original version of this page duplicate post allows you to actually clone a page just to have a backup or to make another page very similar to an existing page or an imported page um, but you know make it a variation page or just a different page on your website altogether so now once you've made your changes to your page, you can go and update it. Um, you can even save the page as a draft if you don't, or if you aren't ready for people to see it. Uh, but that is really the basics of importing a theme. Obviously, um, if you're importing templates or you're importing a, a specific theme into your website, um, that's the easy part. And if you're looking for a video on how to import a theme, at the very beginning of this video, I showed you that, but there's so much more to actually importing and getting taking full advantage of the imported theme. You don't necessarily want to import a theme and keep it exactly as it is once you import it. That really takes away from the branding and the individuality of your website itself. You don't want to import a theme and just keep the entire layout as is and only change text content and images you actually want to do some sophisticated editing to the theme to make it look as though you know it's a completely new website now of course you do have to go and get some assets for your brand such as logos transparent images headers footers backgrounds you do have to go back go out and maybe purchase some stock photography stock videography or hire freelancers or take the time yourself to actually design the assets that's where a lot of your time is going to come in really modifying the theme you have to go out and write really good content for your pages and you want to optimize it a little bit to make you know to move certain sections in places that you actually want them to be whereas when you visit your website you might have one section at the top that you really want at the bottom well fortunately with visual composer um, it easily easily allows you to make sophisticated changes just by dragging and drop dropping different rows different columns different sections and different modules within those sections uh, to rearrange content on your website uh, to give you a quick example you know maybe I want you know let's say I want to switch this text over here let's say these are two different you know completely different um, assets let's say this was a testimonial and this was a video well I could easily go and find this section All right, and I could, you know, for now I'm just gonna move these images. This guy with the sweater and, you know, this uh, looks like an iPad cover or drawing pad. Yeah, that's what it is, a drawing pad for a computer. So really I'm just gonna move these images. I'm gonna switch them. And you also want to consider using a different browser if you you run into some issues uh, when editing your pages to make sure that you're not you know having any compatibility issues for instance I'm using um, Google Chrome in some cases you might want to try to use Firefox um, or Safari or some other browser vice versa if you're using Safari you might want to try Firefox or Google Chrome and see if you have a better editing experience obviously you want a decent internet connection and a decently 
you know if you have a really slow computer or slow laptop you're going to have a hard time um, enjoying this process but you know now let's refresh our page and see if our images are switched since we've updated and made changes to the, those two images only just by dragging and dropping boom they show up in real time once we publish the page okay so it's really easy to go in here and you know make sophisticated changes to your website